COVID-19 matters. POFMA invoked by Health Minister. The Minister for Health, Mr. Gan Kim Yong, instructed the Protection from Online Falsehoods and Manipulation Act POFMA Office to invoke the POFMA fake news law and issue correction directions to opposition politician Go Ming Singh and news site Singapore Uncensored. The last time POFMA correction directions were issued was in July 2020. The first offending post was written by Ban Nyo Fong, who claimed that he was the cousin of a doctor who suffered a stroke due to COVID-19 vaccination. After reading the fabrication, the doctor's actual family confirmed that Ban was not a relative and asked Facebook to remove his post. On 2 April, his post was reposted on two Facebook pages by Goming Singh, who mainly lives in Hong Kong with his family and is the Secretary General of the People's Power Party. The post was also published by Singapore Uncensored on the same day. The second offending post alleged that an 81-year-old man had died from COVID-19 vaccination. In reality, the man had died due to insufficient blood flow to his heart muscles caused by plaque buildup in his blood vessels. On 14 April, both Go and Singapore Uncensored published this falsehood on their respective Facebook pages. After receiving the correction orders from the POFMA office, both Go and Singapore Uncensored complied, placing correction notices alongside their posts. The Health Sciences Authority HSA and the Expert Committee on COVID-19 Vaccination have found no evidence of either vaccine increasing the risk of stroke or heart attack. Clinical Trials for Children Underway Clinical trials are now underway to approve suitable vaccines for children under 16. Both Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna vaccines are under trial for children aged 12 and above, with 100% efficacy reported for the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. Moderna's results, on the other hand, will be announced by the middle of this year. Both vaccines will also be tested on children under 12. The reason for 12 being the age cut off is due to uh, children not developing fully functional immune systems until they reach about that age. Children younger than 12 may also suffer different and most importantly more severe allergic reactions to the vaccines as compared to, uh, to adults. This makes it crucial for vaccine doses and formulation to be adjusted so as to become suitable for young children. Although children are not likely to contract or transmit COVID-19, failing to vaccinate children could be disastrous for our fight against COVID-19. Medical experts have determined that herd immunity can only be achieved once 80 to 90% of the population has been vaccinated. This means that without vaccinating children under 16, who make up 12% of the population, reaching herd immunity is unlikely to be possible. Therefore, the only other alternative, should we fail to vaccinate children, is to achieve high vaccination rates among adults and keep pandemic restrictions in place, such as social distancing and mask wearing. Maintaining safe management measures will lower the vaccination threshold for herd immunity to be achieved, while simultaneously reducing virus mutation chance and buying time for new treatments to be invented. It is worth noting that the Sinovac vaccine has still not been approved by the HSA despite the fact that 200,000 doses were already received by Singapore. Will we mix vaccines? Mixing of different vaccines to improve immune responses to COVID-19 is being trialled in some countries. The UK and Russia, for instance, are testing out a mixture of Oxford, AstraZeneca and Sputnik V vaccines. China is also trying to mix vaccines as well. Singapore is not considering this option yet, as there is still no conclusive efficacy data available to support such an experimental measure.